call the meeting to order. We're at 10 o'clock. I have a motion moved by Bev Cutting and seconded by Carol Lawrence. Be resolved that the Council of Municipality of West Gray hereby returns to open session of Council at 10 a.m. Any questions or comments on that motion? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Good, Mark. Um, and only those matters uh, that we went into closed session were the only matters that were discussed. Uh, and those matters through the uh, closed minutes from the previous meeting. Okay. Uh, down to consent agenda. And I have a motion moved by Doug Hutchison, seconded by R. Hergert. Be it resolved that items A1 to C1, inclusive, contained in part one consent agenda, be adopted as printed. And further that, authorization be given for the actions to be taken as may be necessary to give effect to the recommendations contained therein. Any questions or comments on the consent? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Very good. Thank you, Mark. I'll let you hand out those motions to give effect. And that moves us down then to communications from Council and Mayor. And is there any councillors that have any communications? Councillor Lawrence. Carol? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll let Doug uh, report on on the West Gray 150 but I do want to say um, as you all know it was a great parade and um, we have a bird's eye view marching I might add and on that two and a half kilometer route which is a long way to march I might add too um, there were people the whole way it was that's the most people I've seen at a parade at one of our parades so that was that was really good and I don't know if any of you noticed the stands at the arena. Um, they were they're red with um, with white post, and they had some of the flip charts from the from the library. Mm -hmm. um, that was um, Ralph Clark that that organized that. He came up with the idea. He had them made. He and Donna painted them, and I'm going to be paying for the cost of them. And they're going to be coming back here to our basement, but they'll be there like there's <laughs> many more charts downstairs that they can yeah. go out and be, be moved. So if there's anything on, or hopefully the library can find room for one of them sometime, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, it was nice, and there was a lot of people looking at them, I noticed, uh, at the dinner. And then Sunday, we had our Durham girls reunion, and the uh, Legion was full. It was wonderful. Um, but what was really neat, we had about six to eight uh, 1949 members from the original band were there, and that was really, really neat. Mm. Um, there were quite a few from my uh, high school years, and then right through when the band started again in 68 through to 84. Uh, and we also had uh, Scout House uh, Precision Drill Team there, and it was there fantastic and although it's not a lot of money we had a pot up and we do have another fifty dollars donation towards the bridge for the so that will be coming into the office here very good thank you Carol I was just going to say most of the people that were there uh, we call it the heritage walkway bridge it was the old railway bridge when they went to school and they used to walk across it after the train was over so they probably didn't know what what that was <laughs> Some of them, I understand, may have raced the train across there on a few occasions as well, too. But. Yeah, and walked across the planks underneath, too. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Any other communications? Doug, Councillor Hutchison. Yeah, just, just a few comments on the, um, the celebration in, uh, in Durham on Saturday. Uh, it was a West, West Gray celebration, so I think that maybe has to do with the, tel the, the number of crowd that we had, the number of people, because we promoted it as for all of West Gray, so that was that was good. I think there was a good uh, uh, representation from different areas in the, in West Gray. But yeah, the parade was uh, very well done. One of the longer ones we've had for a while, which is which was great. Um, the um, the dinner went over really well. I think they had over 400 tickets sold for the for the dinner for the chicken dinner. 
lots of um, displays, music, games. Uh, the kids' games went over really well between the bouncy castles and the climbing wall. Uh, they went right till right till dusk until the fireworks started. So, lots of music. There was diff different bands playing uh, all the whole time. So, it was just a great great day all all on, all in total. And um, the weather cooperated, which was important because um, it didn't look too promising in the morning, but it, it turned out to be a pretty good day weatherwise. So I'd just like to congratulate um, the Lions Club, uh, who played a, uh, took a lead role on that uh, celebration, and the Agriculture Society uh, sort of took, took hold of the parade and organized that, so that was Donna Clark. Maureen Bellinger from the Lions did a lot of work uh, organizing through the Lions, and they were also part of our Canada 150 committee, so there were a number of people on the Canada 150 committee um, that also helped out there uh, a lot to organize that day. So it was a great day and uh, hopefully people enjoyed it and it's one to remember. And there will be a uh, video of the parade. I mean, I think Mr. Bell was the uh, commentator, so we'll see uh, see what uh, he has to say about the parade as it went through and, and we should get a copy of that. People can uh, get copies to keep uh, for their own reference. So, so yeah, good day and all. One other item I just wanted to mention uh, uh, last week and the week before, the um, three schools in the area, Normanby, Durham and St. Peter, St. Paul's, uh, took part in the longest day of play. So um, uh, as part of the Great Bruce Health Unit, uh, sponsored that along with uh, Bruce Power. They, we gave a number of t-shirts and balls and frisbees and whatnot that they, for the kids to take part on that uh, a day where they had basically a play day just just to get them out there and be active. So that also, we also had that happen the last couple of weeks. So I think that's it for me. You're not going to mention the, uh, the tug of war that uh, took place. Uh, there was a number of our uh, emergency and, uh, programs, the uh, firefighters, the police, and uh, the Durham Thundercats uh, had a tug of war down on the main stage in, or in front of the main stage for the uh, West Gray 150. And a uh, great pleasure to see that it was the Aiton firefighters that are the strongest and sturdiest of uh, all of our emergency uh, crews. They were uh, very pleased to uh, get their trophies and uh, drank from the cup in the beer gardens uh, afterwards, uh, celebrating their great victory over the uh, West Gray Police. Uh, I believe that they may have even, they said it's, it's very nice It'll be 150 years of bragging rights, I believe, was what the last uh, comment was that I heard from them. The uh, police chief thought maybe they should keep it, tone it down a little bit. Uh, 150 years, they may lose their voice before uh, they end up uh, getting it. But yes, congratulations, uh, Doug, to your committee. Uh, and congratulations as well. Uh, I slipped away after the dinner on Saturday, was over to Priceville, uh, Priceville uh, Stoddard Hall Committee uh, put on their celebrations, uh, Canada Day celebrations, always on July 1st. They had a uh, good crowd, was down uh, a little bit because of all the other activities that were going on on July 1st. Uh, the Durham Lions, uh, West Grade Lions Club, usually has theirs the Saturday before, uh, but this year because of it, the 150, so it did take away a little bit, uh, as well as Southgate had their uh, function going on, the Agro Day uh, celebrations and uh, fireworks at Holstein as well too. So they did notice a little bit, but there was still a very good crowd there. Uh, and congratulations to the uh, Priceful group for having their 150th Canada Day celebrations as well, uh, and a number of other activities that were going on. Councillor Hergut. Rebecca? I would just like to thank all the organizations, the individuals, our staff here at the office and all the different departments. It was a fantastic July 1st celebration and thank you so much for everyone's efforts. It, it wouldn't have been the same without everybody volunteering. So I do appreciate that and thanks to all the people that make West Gray fun. This is a good celebration. Thanks. Thank you, Rebecca. One thing I would like to add at about 1.30 uh, Saturday afternoon, 
our MP uh, and MPP uh, showed up. The scheduling issues uh, from them being in the whole riding, uh, but Mr. Miller was here and uh, presented us with the Canada 150 flag. At that point in time, uh, it was drizzling and raining when Mr. Miller came in. I don't know whether you can take anything from it, but Mr. Miller left and the sun came out. So I'll just, I'll say that he did say that there would be good weather, so uh, whether he was good to his word or whether the rain was just following him around. I, I jest, it was uh, great to see Larry and, and great to see uh, Mr. Walker, our MPP here as well too, uh, that uh, participated in the parade. And uh, I think he, he had to cut out, but it was great that he was able to make time for uh, this portion of his riding. Uh, good to see him and Larry here with the flag. And I'm not sure where that flag, did it end up with the Lions Club? Or I'm not, uh, Maureen was there and I think she ended up with the flag. Uh, I think we had a couple of other ones, so Doug? They hung it up in the arena. I saw it there. It's a, a blue, a blue background. So uh, hopefully it will end up back here somewhere sometime. We will track it, track it down and and uh, get a hold of that. And the other thing that uh, did happen too is they had uh, the decorating contest. They gave out some uh, prizes for uh, home yes. decorating, farm decorating, so on. I can't remember all of the winners, so I won't uh, get into the few that I remember. But it will be, I'm sure, covered by the local media. There was pictures taken, and there'll be pictures posted out there. So. Congratulations to all those people that took part in that. Yes, excellent. Any other communications? Again, thank you. And it's not the end of the 150 celebrations, I believe uh, coming up in a week's time, give or take. Uh, Newstead wants to, uh, they've got some celebrations coming on. And in August, I believe uh, it's uh, Aiton has a number of activities uh, happening as well too. I'm not sure just the exact date in, in August there, Doug. Um, the the July 15th is the Newstead Day, okay. so they're planning a number of activities at the at the arena and downtown. They have some neat things going on there, so hopefully you can take part in that one. And uh, in August, right now it says August 5th, but we're not sure the Harvest Day uh, celebration where we have a, a local farmer is putting on a. Um, Harvest Day, I uh, can't remember the name now. Um, Dennis Fisher. Dennis Fisher at the Fisher Farm. They're going to be doing a sort of a uh, Harvest Day and sort of tie in with the Canada 150. So hopefully it'll be a, a little bigger celebration there too. So plus there's a number of other things going on in the Aiton area and maybe a few more coming up in the rest of West Gray too. And, I uh, might uh, Aiton, their ball tournaments in uh, August. And also their movie night. They're going to have a movie night at the Centennial Hall outside. Yeah. And that's 19th. all, you know, ongoing. Yeah. And right at the far southwest corner, uh, Clifford's Homecoming is the 4th to the 7th. It's a long weekend. And uh, I did find out over the weekend they are having a parade. So there is a parade uh, there, Carol. Uh, that they're having a great celebrations down there on the long weekend as well, too. It's not... It's not in West Gray, it's not in Gray County, but the four counties do meet down on that corner down there. Uh, and a lot of uh, the south part of, of Normanby Township, the full former Normanby Township of West Gray, uh, connects with uh, Clifford as well too. So an invitation out there to anybody that can uh, and uh, has connections to Clifford, enjoy their celebration on the long weekend of August as well too. Carol. That very same day, uh, Southgate, Dundalk, in fact, is having yes. their uh, celebration as well, their homecoming. Everybody's celebrating at this time of the year. That would uh, give me a bit of a segue then, if that's it for communications, to... Uh, Sorry. Oh. Okay, one more, Bev. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, Re Rebecca and I um, went out on last week to judge that um, yes. farm con and farm residential Central. commercial. There were three categories, and uh, we divided it up and spent a number of hours driving around and taking photographs. And I just maybe want to announce the winners. I know they've been announced, yes. but for um, under the residential group uh, was Sue 
I'm going to say Rizo or Rizo, I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced, um, lives in Glenelg on concession two there. Her house was absolutely beautiful, scared the life out of me because I went around the back and was taking photographs because they had even decorated their pool. And somebody came out and went, hello, and I just about dropped my camera and everything because I... And I'm going, sorry, sorry, you shouldn't be on your property. But anyways, that was okay. They were very friendly afterwards when they knew what I was doing. Um, and then the farm entries, um, also in Glenelg, was uh, Deanna and Don Foster. Absolutely beautiful farm. They had the um, front uh, stone pillars with flags, and they had a bicycle, and the gardens were lovely. They had a flag going down their long driveway. It was a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful setup, beautifully done, beautiful manicured farm. Um, and then for the businesses, um, Rebecca took the photographs of this, and uh, I'm going to just spell this out because for you to envy me. Oh, okay. I never could figure that one out. Um, it's with J. Right resident, yeah, resident or the uh, commercial story is for you to envy to envy me. me. So it's F for you S U V me hair design, and it's Jason Osborne, and um, they had a beautiful display, and uh, that's from Durham, and uh, they had flags and and bows and it was just beautifully done and and so they uh they took first prize in uh in durham so just wanted to mention those because they had done a lot of work and beautifully done and and it was a it was a lot of fun actually going around and speaking to people and um as long as they didn't scare the life out of me it was fine very good thank you rebecca and and bev on behalf of the committee for uh doing that judging so that, as I said, leads into uh, our presentation this morning. Uh, I feel it very humbling and, a, and a, but a great honor to, I got a phone call a couple of months ago, uh, Mark, from uh, the Governor General's office and uh, saying that uh, they had a number of uh, volunteer sovereign uh, medals for volunteers that uh, are given out uh, every year and that uh, an individual they couldn't get to all of them and they were uh, hopeful that uh, the municipality the mayor and council could present one to uh, an individual from West Gray that uh, was honored this year of getting uh, a medal for his work, uh, not only in uh, this community, but specifically uh, for his work and uh, dedication and volunteerism uh, from Grey Roots is where he was nominated for this. And without any further ado, uh, the winner of the Sovereign Medal for, uh, and lives in West Grey is Mr. Delton Becker. So, Delton, I wondered if you could come forward and I'll present you with this medal certificate. It's quite a, quite a package that they have here for you. I hope you brought one of the Hudson trucks. So, Delton, on behalf of uh, Canada and the uh, Governor General from Canada, your medal, the sovereign medal, and it also was a pin there as well too. I know that you use uh, uh, your uh, jackets to have those pins on. I'm not sure whether you use the medals as much as well uh, in your uh, attire as well. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I do use the lapel pins. I, I have one or two other ribbons, and I'm never sure just quite when I should wear them, so they, they stay in the display cabinet. But I'm very happy and proud to have received this. I'm sure there are many other people in uh, Gray County that are just as deserving or more deserving than I am. But it certainly is an honor to uh, receive this uh, from the Governor General's office. and. Uh, I will wear the lapel pin very proudly. 
Well, you've done us very proud uh, here in West Gray with your dedication and your volunteerism and your continued volunteerism. And can I say one thing that Canada is 150 and I did hear that possibly uh, a, f a week or so ago that you may have had a, a birthday, but you're only half, only half, half of what, <laughs> uh, still 100% proud and uh, congratulations on the uh, 75th birthday milestone Thank and uh, many more years uh, of enjoyment. Thank you. With your good wife, Helen. <laughs> Again, thank you, Delton. And there is, a, as I said, there's a whole other package here with certificates, pens, pins, and uh, all of that package is in there, so that goes along with it. Maybe it'll tell me the occasion <laughs> where I can wear the ribbon. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there are occasions when I should wear it and uh, don't think of it, but anyway, thank you very much. Well, thank you again, Elton. Turn that one. And of course, Delton, you're no stranger uh, to these chambers and no strangers to uh, everybody and anybody, uh, not only in Bentick Township, but uh, in the municipality of, of Gray. Uh, Delton had served many, many years on municipal council and certainly was the first mayor of, of West Gray. So thank you very much again for your dedication and, and work uh, that you've given back to the community as a whole. And the media has taken them off to do that. <laughs> as there's been many occasions, Helen, where he's been stolen away from you on his volunteerism. So uh, more so I say thank you, Helen, for uh, the many hours that you've given up uh, in your life uh, for Delton to serve in his community. So uh, maybe the medal should be for you and not for him, but. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes we do. And we don't give enough credit to uh, our spouses that stand, be, stand behind us on many occasions. So again, thank you very much, Helen, for uh, allowing your good husband to uh, do what he does for our community and knowing what you've done for the community as well too and that should be recognized very much as well so thank you okay that will move us on then to uh, is there any business arising in the previous meeting I don't believe so there'll be some uh, comments later on so that brings us down to staff reports and our uh, director, uh, and I'm trying to think, where does that start? Page 40. Marks is on the consent. There we are. And the first uh, is with the vouchers. And is there uh, any comments before I introduce that motion? Doug. Councillor Hutchison. Just a couple of questions. Um, one had to do with uh, calcium costs, and I was ho hoping Brent would be here to answer this, but maybe maybe someone on council can explain it to me. Page 49, or page 4 on carries, $218,000 for calcium um, this year. Is, yes. that, is that standard, or is that a high for this year, or is that normal? I'm going to say that's pretty much uh, on uh, a normal. That's what it costs for us to uh, do that on all of the gravel roads. Of course, you know, West Gray has, uh, has quite a few. It was uh, probably our grading uh, to get prepared for the calcium. It was a little delayed uh, on finishing up this year. I don't know, in talking to Brent late last week, we still may have one or two um, portions to finish up, but because of the rain uh, and grading, and then coming rain and then having to regrade our uh, maintenance of getting ready for the calcium uh, maybe a little bit higher this year but that's
pretty standard uh, of what our calcium okay. costs are on a yearly basis. Okay, thank you. I didn't realize it was that much. Mm -hmm. um, the other one that was on page 58, uh, page 13 on yours, Carrie, was um, Glenelg Street lighting. And I'm just wondering, it was like a couple hundred dollars or something, and I'm just wondering what, what all that is under the Glenelg Street lighting. Uh, I think is that the price for one? Lights. I think what the 23 is. has the one light, but that that wouldn't be 200. No, it's actually 646 dollars. And I under. think when we've done some of our street lighting over, they might have put a couple of fixtures on it that were the same size or type uh, in there. Uh, Brent's been working with Hydro to kind of mm -hmm. split out and and uh, based on the type of wattage and the type of fixture, they kind of had combined some in there. Okay. Because it just seemed fairly high, I thought when, and I wasn't sure what that was. And obviously, it has to be more than one light. But if they include, yeah, uh, replacing heads or something, maybe that's different. Um, yeah. Some of those additions. The one on 23 will be a, uh, a county. I think uh, oh, this one may be in the Ganelk Highlands, um, Ganelk Island Estates. Oh, okay. That um, would be some of the street lighting that we're, we're looking at there. Okay. That would be our responsibility. Okay. Any other questions on the accounts? Okay. So I have a motion moved by Rob Thompson, seconded by Doug Hutchison, be resolved that the Director of Finance Treasurer be authorized to pay the accounts presented as voucher number 12, 2017, of the Municipality of West Gray in the amount of $935,799.32. Any questions on the motion? Call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. And the next one, Carrie, under your uh, reports, number two, is a uh, recommendation to support the municipality of Killarney. Um, consider on consideration of Bill 68. Um, out of court payments. Anything further from your report? Just for um, members that aren't uh, familiar with the process, whenever there is a tax sale, um, if there is any surplus funds after we've paid the outstanding taxes uh, from the tender, we uh, pay those into the court. After a year, um, the property owner has a, has a one year term that they can go to the court and uh, claim those surplus funds. Um, if they don't, after the one-year period, the municipality, as the legislation currently stands, the municipality can uh, apply to the court uh, for payment of those funds. Um, so what this would do would eliminate that, and it would the Crown would keep those funds. And it's just any surplus over and above. Oh. Um, so it depends on the, the minimum tenders that you that you get in. Okay. So this is challenging that and saying that it should stay back with the municipality, stay within the municipality. So I have a motion moved by our Hergert, seconded by Carol Lawrence. Be it resolved that the Council of Municipality of West Gray hereby supports the municipality of Killarney in their request to the Minister of Municipal Affairs for reconsideration of the proposed changes under Bill 68 pertaining to out-of-court payments. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Premier of Ontario, Minister of Municipal Affairs, local MPPs, uh, Phnom, and Amel. Any questions or comments on this? Doug, Councillor so, Hutchison. So with this Bill 68, it not only circumvents our right to apply for those funds, but also overrules, overrides the property owner's right to apply for those funds. Is that right, Carrie? I believe that's how the legislation hmm. is. Didn't quite get that. Sorry, yeah, I, I do no. believe that's how the legislation is worded, um, that payments into court would stay with the Crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i definitely vote against that one. <laughs> well, I think that, yeah, there should be the opportunity for the property owner to reclaim that, but there is a bit of a gray area there, whether that is absolute. That once it ends up in the court, it becomes the Crown, and there is no application. Carol? If I might ask, do we have a mechanism to recover the money it cost us for advertising and that sort of thing in that whole tax sale before, like out of the money that would go 
forward to the province? Yeah, that becomes part of the minimum tender amount for the tax sales, any fees and charges in addition to the taxes and penalty and interest that are on the property. Um, so that becomes all part of that package of what the minimum tender amount would be. So this would just be, you know, if, if the property minimum tender amount is $10,000 and we get a $20,000 is the highest tender, it's that $10,000 that would go into the court. Less the cost, though, of advertising and That's all that sort of thing? That's part of minimum tender. That's we part of that it. all into yeah. the minimum tender amount okay. at the time we advertise for tax sale. Yeah. I'm afraid, Mr. Mayor, it's just another provincial money grab. Um, I, yeah. I, yep. And another way of, uh, of putting it that it's, um, it's interesting, though, that it's coming from uh, Killarney. Uh, and the phenomenon, I mean, it's northern municipalities where you do see a, a lot of this, certainly today, um, and not as much on, well, obviously it wouldn't be on Crown lands, but this uh, would be on a lot of that northern properties uh, to see some of that money flowing back to the province, I don't believe is, is correct. Motion's been uh, read. Any other questions on the motion? Then I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. And the next one is uh, good news um, for, uh, for us on the uh, tennis and pickleball club. Uh, have donated five hundred dollars. That's for information. Um, any other comments you want to make on that, Doug? As as a member, sure. I think uh, think the club will be coming forward with some other money too as time goes on. If really the uh, membership's gone up and uh, people are enjoying the courts and whatnot, so we just have to get some signage up there to recognize the uh, homecoming committee for their efforts of putting that uh, money into that and uh, reinforce some of our rules and hopefully get our basketball courts uh, finished up there, uh, some landscaping around there. We're looking at uh, some options there and hopefully get the new backboard replaced as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay, all right, good news story. Anything else, Kerry? I do have, um Steve Earhart has gotten a couple of quotes for the air conditioning unit at the library. Um, he was trying to get a third quote, but um, a lot of, as you can imagine, a lot of the contractors are quite busy and they never got back to him. Um, the lowest quote, uh, which he's recommending, um, is from Sandy Hamilton, plumbing and heating, $20,881. Plus HST, um, we would also have to put down the cement pad um, for the rooftop platform, um, and then if they wanted to do the insulation of the duct, in ducting in the attic, that uh, would be our expense. Um, he, once the materials come in, he would be able to schedule it uh, fairly quickly. The second quote was higher, um, and the start date would not be until October 1st on it. So I will do up a motion uh, for consideration for the end of the meeting to approve that if you want. Um, I can get that draft for Mark. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll go and type that up. Yeah. Unless there's any other. Okay. Rebecca? Just a question on that. What can you time? use your yeah. microphone for Adam? Carrie, what, what is the timeline for installation of that? Um, it doesn't note, but he could start it right away. It's just a matter of when the, Getting he gets the uh, unit in. Okay. Um, so depending if it's a week to two weeks to get the product in, um, then he would be prepared to tee it up and, and start uh, right, right away. away. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Carol, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, yeah, can I just ask, um, the rooftop unit, of course, and then the duct work, is that all included in that quote, and it's just a cement pad that's over and above, or is the duct work over and above? Just the insulating of the ductwork in the attic, which is the same on both quotes. Um, I think it, Rob might. Uh... Rob, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, it's it just insulate the uh, ductwork to keep the the air conditioning at a proper temperature, and it, it works better when you insulate the pipes inside. 
So that that's our cost, I guess. And then the cement pad, which Public Works will do the cement pad. Okay. All right. So we'll look forward to that as a as a notice of motion or a direct motion. Carry. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions for a director of finance? Thank you, Carrie. Uh, okay, that brings us down then to clerk's report. Mark, and your first one here is uh, from the health unit and opiate crisis. Yes, the uh, health unit has volunteered to come as a delegation and present to council if they wish. Um, just the uh, impacts of the opioid issue or crisis on Gray Bruce. So if council wishes a delegation on that matter, I can certainly uh, be in contact with the health unit and arrange a proper delegation in time. Councillor Lawrence, Carol. I would encourage uh, council to invite the health unit to speak to us. I, um, I don't know that all of us are completely uh, informed uh, we have some knowledge but it would you know we do need to at least be informed and keep on top of this I know it's a it's a huge problem and growing yeah. and certainly one that uh, our police force and at the police services board uh, and from our zone portion and, and I'll even go further than that uh, the OEPSB the Ontario Association of Police Services Board had our uh, spring conference, summer conference, uh, just recently, June 21st uh, to the 24th, in the town of the Blue Mountains. And this was one of the things that, from a policing standpoint, is hugely uh, problematic um, with policing. It's uh, the drug uh, crystal meth uh, certainly has been on the radar for the last and opiates have kind of been uh, s swimming under the radar uh, to use an analogy but it is very much coming forward now um, that crystal meth is still a, a huge problem out there but opiates is uh, dominating the police calls uh, so I would suggest that Council would be very uh, forward thinking to go ahead and take a look, uh, see what the health unit has, but also invite our police chief, uh, if they're going to make the presentation, that the police chief be invited as well too. Doug? I was just going to suggest that. I think police chief has some background in uh, drug enforcement, so he'd be a good resource to, to have here also. And certainly our uh, fire as well. Rebecca? I was just going to ask, do, do our police and fire have these rescue kits with them? And what would be the cost of getting those? And or anyone that provides aid on our behalf, our partnerships with other fire departments and police services, do they have these rescue kits available in their emergency response unit? Uh, Bev, I don't believe that we have them. Um, paramedics? Uh, have them but it, then it's it's one of those with the training um, the cost of the unit I don't believe is is it's hugely cost uh, costly um, for it but it's something of that nature yeah but it's uh, you know being trained and the ability to use um, the uh, uh, what do you call it the injection but uh, yeah the kit yeah that uh, they have uh, to I want to use the word doctor but that's not uh, uh, people that are in that the skill set I mean yeah but the ability to administer, administer but uh, oh it's escaping me uh, on the uh, well, you got to diagnose that that's what it is. It's an opiate overdose and overdose and to be able to administer but to uh, apply this, uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah, it's naloxone that it is to uh, overdo that, so, okay. 
So it looks like Mark uh, put a letter into the health unit and we can have them come down. I know that uh, it is, well, as it says in the background, what is it, every how many minutes that we have an overdose uh, death in North America today? Bev? I'm going to step out here and say that I'm pretty sure that the health unit is not um, as up to par as some of the other um, organizations that deal with this. Uh, the health unit is, of course, the health unit, so it considers itself probably an authority, but I highly doubt it is. I would suggest that something like New Directions or um, one of the organizations that actually deals with the um, outcome and the income of these people coming in and going out of that uh, particular counseling programs, et cetera, et cetera, I'd suggest we invite them as well. One of the speakers from New Directions who is, uh, you know, is a group that travels in Gray and Bruce County and does the counseling and does the first response type thing. So um, just having, I, I know a little bit about this field and mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a very good choice. Okay, let us uh, leave that with you, Mark, on getting the health unit and what other agencies uh, may be able to give us a bit better insight onto this program or frontline people. Front people. Okay, all right. Any other questions of Mark at this point in time? Seeing none. Then, Mark, I think that brings us down, uh, if that's it, that'll bring us down to bylaws, which we have a couple on the uh, agenda. All right. Uh, so I'm going to introduce bylaw number. There. Uh, yeah, I had the wrong one here. Bylaw number 68. So I have a move by Rob Thompson, seconded by Doug Hutchison, be it resolved that bylaw number 68, 2017, being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 40, 2014, being a bylaw to establish fees and charges for certain services provided by the municipality of West Gray, be now read a first, second, and third time, passed as amended and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Mark, comment on the am amendment or... Uh, just Lawrence. that uh, under uh, roller skating admission, 13 years of age and older, it was showing $3, uh, no HST, it should be $4. Okay. So if it could be amended to read $4. And that's the amendment, yep, that was picked up. So that amendment will be uh, on the charges for roller skating. Any other comments or questions on the bylaw? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Here, Mark. The second one is a confirming bylaw. I have it moved by Bev Cutting, second by R. Hergert. Be it resolved that bylaw number 69, 2017, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the July 4th, 2017 council meeting, be now read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk. Sealed with the seal of the corporation and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions or comments on this motion? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. Uh, new business. Is there anything under new business? Councillor Herbert? So as, as council may know, we get the weekly communication blast from the county. And Correct. Doug has mentioned uh, in previous emails that go around to all of us that we should maybe be getting those out to the public. And I think that we should be as well. The, it provides a lot of tourist opportunities throughout Great County that uh, if somebody's around this weekend and nothing on the plans, they could look it up and we could be supporting the countywide uh, economic development and tourism initiative. So I think that somehow we should incorporate those that information that we get and pass it along to everybody as well. So I don't know if that's something that Eunice can, you know, receive and then get right back out to our mailing, like our emailing list. 
or if that could be on our signage or how we could incorporate that? Well, I think because of the, the capacity of it, and thank you for bringing that up because it was commented on at County Council last Thursday uh, about our e-blast and, you know, how does the county get it out to more? Uh, because it is a weekly, just as you said, update on what the county or upcoming things uh, from a county perspective and being able to, the county has a uh, blast out list uh, very similar to what West Gray has, but is it, you know, would it be even more ex extensive? And that's where it was left at the county to continue to develop that blast out list uh, or group email and uh, from a lower tier, it was encouraged at the county meeting on Thursday that the lower tier, you know, use their resources as well too. Um, it is information, it's no different than uh, a newsletter or a newspaper for that, uh, or the media from uh, Whiteman that, uh, you know, people can use it, but if it's out there, they can, Uh, no, what I'm looking at right now is, is Whiteman. It's not that other company, Carol, and, we, and we're not worried about them either. Uh, right now, right, Adam? <laughs> uh, that uh, whatever we can do to get the information and then it's available to the individuals in our community and how they uh, receive it and use it from there on in, whether it is deleted or read and expressed, but we can get it out there to them and... and have them digest it or, or use it for their purposes. We can present it to them and where it goes from there is, is up to the individuals. But I think getting Eunice to be able to just forward that to our base, which I think right now, Mark, is in the hundreds anyways that we have uh, going out there as well too. Doug, Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, I think it's important. It's, uh, it's a cheap and easy way of advertising too for people that have events and whatnot. Like mm -hmm. it's, I mean, you see a lot of events on there and not, not all that many from, from uh, West Gray. The other thing that I think we miss out a little bit is um, the, we don't use the radio stations enough, I don't think. And when you, you, know, you hear um, uh, Gray Highlands is on the radio all the time with uh, events that they have coming up and whatnot. So I think we could do a better job of advertising between, you know, between the local ones, FM 102, the River, uh, Country 93. Those, those three are, are major in our area, and I think... Um, we could really, I think they all have a fairly free coming events section. You just write in an email and they'll put it on the radio. So I think we could use them a lot more because it's just one more way of getting information out there because it doesn't matter how much advertising you do, somebody will come to you and say, so what's happening in this event? Or, you know, how come I didn't know about that? Well, I don't know, you, you, you try and that's all you can do. So the more we put it out there, the better. Um, I will say that uh, Gray Highlands uh, from what you hear on a few of the radio stations, uh, that is a lot of purchased um, advertising as well, too, uh, from them. That's uh, the way that they have gone. Um, but there are taking advantage of uh, some of those uh, free announcement uh, portions that are on the radio uh, and TV as well, too, uh, on a couple of our local cable uh, and maybe ask Eunice, that's kind of our communications expert, to uh, get a hold of uh, those free spots, because I know we don't have the budget for this year, but maybe it'll be something to look in 2018 uh, to find out whether we can or should, or what's the best and effective way to advertise for our uh, community events out there. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, I guess the other thing on uh, new business, we had a uh, special council meeting on Friday. Uh, at that point in time, it was uh, there was a bylaw passed uh, rescinding the employment of our CAO. Uh, Mr. Adams has uh, left the municipality's uh, employment and will be seeking, uh, I believe, uh, other employment opportunities uh, for him. 
but uh, the employment uh, relationship between the municipality of West Gray and Mr. Adams has uh, ceased. So with that, I think that it behooves the municipality. We did a uh, report on the last time and it was dealt with and uh, through a consultant and received by council that the municipality uh, should have a CAO uh, in position. Uh, at this point, I think from last Friday's meeting, it was that the clerk, Mr. Uh, Turner, will kind of assume some of those duties, but uh, to make him an interim, we can deal with that all through the clerk's process, but we should start thinking about how are we going to go about uh, advertising or doing it ourselves or with the help of a consulting company uh, to replace uh, the CEO's position in West Gray at this point in time. We do have a press release that will be going out right at the end of uh, the council meeting for uh, all the press out there. So I'm open to suggestions uh, or thoughts on uh, recruitment of a, a new CEO for the municipality. Is there any consideration at this point in time or have staff come forward with a report on uh, what their thoughts are on the recruitment process? Bev, Councillor Cuddy. <clears throat> we, um, as a first time for myself, we engaged a consulting firm to help us with the hiring of a new police chief and yes. I was skeptical at the time of um, thinking you know we're perfectly intelligent people why can't we do it however I did find the process to be extremely valuable um, an outside opinion of somebody who is professional in hiring professionals uh, was very good guided us very well the questions um, we had several meetings with them prior to the actual interviews and it was um, it was eye-opening to me and I think it was a very good process and I would be willing to to engage again in that process for uh, a position like this which is the top position in the municipality and I think holds a lot of uh, uh, you know responsibility and um, character that needs to be had for somebody in that position and I think it should be something we consider. Okay. Council Lawrence. Carol? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was just wondering if um, either of the two former CAOs of the county are available or doing any of that kind of work like Norm Gamble or Gary Wood. I feel that they know um, they are they're knowledgeable of our area. Sometimes you get a consulting firm and they don't know your, the norm here, the really what we really need in the form of a CAO and someone who is familiar with and yet not connected to me would be better than, a, than an outside consulting firm. Also, I just want to say <laughs> we've had different committees hire different CAOs and I really think all of us, because we're now down to seven, should be involved in uh, at least listening to the interviews and because <clears throat> Different eyes see different things, mm -hmm. rather than just two or three people, because we are only seven, and uh, two, two goes at it and hasn't been the best. So I think if all of us are together and our joint thoughts and discussion might be better for the municipality. Very good. Take that. Rob, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, I'm just going to say I agree with Councillor Cutting. I think the consultants know a lot more than we do and, and uh, as you say we've had uh, in my time here but this is our second CAO that's left so um, but I'd like to see us move ahead as soon as possible uh, it does a lot of work for Mr. Turner and with the uh, elections coming up next year he's going to be extremely busy and I think we need to not wait and uh, press forward here in the next month. Well, if everybody's running and nobody runs against us, it's an amalgamation. Mr. Turner's job is very easily. That's not happening. <laughs> you want to guarantee that. Oh, you're going to guarantee it, are you, Mr. Thompson? Thank you. Um, 
I think, Carol, uh, your point, but that would still be somebody that would be coming in on a consulting basis yes. um, and as an open process. Uh, can we, I, my suggestion would be to, to strike a small committee to work uh, with Mark and or Kerry uh, or other staff on putting together a uh, RFP to go out to uh, seek a consultant, whether it be a professional firm as Councillor Cutting or even an individual that could help us, but prepare that to go out uh, in the uh, very near future to uh, address uh, the issue of fulfilling the position for a CAO. And I would look for uh, a couple of, couple of council members to uh, sit and work with staff to bring that RFP back of what we're looking for. Bring Doug. Back to us. Yep. In two weeks. Yep. Yeah. For that to go out. No. Um, I think it could be done in a short period, but for the next council meeting, for council to approve, that's the RFP, a two week uh, turnaround on it, and we could have that back with, you know, and be started on the process within a month. Doug. I was just going to suggest, is that something that maybe because um, someone like Kerry and Brent who are, um, know the internal workings of the office, would it be worthwhile having them involved in that RFP process? I know you don't want to lay on too many more jobs, but it's just that they have a good idea and Mark, uh, the good working idea of what's the workings and what are the skills needed for a CAO in working through this office. Um. I think we're, we're kind of talking about two different things there, Doug. Just setting up an RFP for a uh, consulting firm to come in and help us. And that uh, then would drive uh, what the RF or the uh, posting would go out and look like. So I think the first process to find a consultant or consulting firm to help us with the process and then have it set up about what we're looking for uh, in, a, in an application process. Yeah. Of, of what, you know, an, a CEO, what we would be looking for, um, and that would help, help us through, the consultant would help us through that, as well as staff, as well as council coming together to put that uh, application out there. Okay. Councillor Lawrence? Carol. Well, I was just going to ask, we'd put the RFP out, but I would assume it would also be invitational. <clears throat> it could also be an invitational RFP, like, so we could target uh, certain, you know, enough, yeah. but... Uh, yep, yeah, enough yeah. firms mm -hmm. that are there. I mean, uh, as soon as you open that up, you're going to have the, uh, the big ones, uh, Ravenhill Group and a couple of other ones. Um, there's some guy out there that does that type of work, Bell Chamber. Uh, Nigel will probably, uh, his firm, and I'm, I'm not certain whether it's Bell Chamber and company or whatever it is, uh, but that would be a couple that I would think of. Um, and there's a couple of local companies as well too, I think uh, that was one maybe that Councillor Cutting was referring to that helped us with the, um, the Police Services Board with the uh, Chief's position. So. Okay. Is there consensus to put together a couple of council members to put an RFP uh, together to bring back for the next council meeting on the uh, RFP for a consulting firm to help us with the CEO's position? Who who would uh, who would like to either volunteer or volunteer somebody? Here. Okay, Carol, Doug? I wouldn't mind sitting in on that just to get a better understanding of the uh, RFP process. It's, it's a bit new to me, so. Okay, uh, do we need a third person? Ms. Hergert? You were, you were volunteering like volunteer or volunteer to, somebody? I would like to volunteer myself. Okay, um, there is uh, three. And to have a, uh, a ad hoc committee to develop an RFP with staff uh, participation. Do 
want that as a motion, Mark, to put that committee together, the ad hoc committee together, to develop an RFP for a consulting uh, parameters around a consulting firm or individual. And the mayor is always on every committee verbatim, I think is the way it's always been, hasn't it, Delton? <laughs> Yes. So, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Hergert, Councillor Hutchison, and the Mayor ex officio and staff as required to put together an RFP for consulting. Firms to apply for the CEO's recruitment. is writing that out. Do I have a mover and a seconder? This would be a direct motion. For yeah, we'll have that coming. Yeah, we'll have that coming forward. Okay. We'll do that as a direct motion. Correct on that, Mark. Okay. This is just an invitation to for consulting services. Okay. We'll have that as a notice of motion. Anything else under new business? Um, I don't think there's any res any resolution will be need needed, but uh, from the county uh, last Thursday, the county passed uh, the minutes, uh, endorsed the minutes from May 25th, so going forward that uh, the process is in the infinite, infant stages uh, of redeveloping long-term care, so I'd just like to bring an update on that. Um, it's to redevelop 166 beds, uh, would stay in the county, and developing that uh, facility uh, recommended that it be here in Durham and that a consulting company uh, help with uh, developing policies and procedures. Uh, it's been kind of laid out there that it's on the day-to-day -day operations management, but it's a consulting firm on developing the policies and procedures and interpretation of the continuing changes in the Long-Term Care Act. Um, and having uh, an expert opinions on how those are going to be develop and how those regulations are going to affect long-term care in the uh, public sector and develop or delivering that from a county perspective. So uh, that motion uh, was all tied together and was passed uh, by the majority of votes at County Council. So we look forward to that developing uh, into the near future. Councillor Lawrence, Carol. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe the motion also read that the uh, consulting company or the management company would also, uh, um, what can I say, lead the redevelopment of uh, 166 beds as well as the day-to-day -day operations of, wasn't it, the present, the present homes and uh, the new one in the future? I would believe develop that's the, the way policies it was. around, uh, yeah, developing the around the new home, but not as much on the building or the. Okay, that's not the way yeah. I read it or interpreted that well, motion. Yeah, I thought it was to lead that plus day-to-day -day operations. No, it, okay. it would be on developing that policies on implementing day-to-day -day operations, but it's not to uh, lead or do the the redevelop or the building of this new home that there would be uh, firms, other firms be in place for that uh, going forward as we go forward. Might be looking for huff and puff again. <laughs> what do you think, Telton? <laughs> <laughs> no comments necessary on that, but yes, there will be somebody if that is one of the new consulting firms. Doug. 
Councilor Hodgson. I'm just, I'm just wondering, I know it's quite a ways away, but I just wonder how active uh, as a council are we going to be in terms of uh, looking at land purchase for where this, this uh, new home is going to go, what's going to happen with Rockwood in terms of, you know, uh, after, after the new home's built. So I'm just wondering, how, is, uh, is the council going to have some, some role to play in this? Uh, is it all going to be taking place from the county level and we're going to have a little, very little say? My suggestion would be that uh, there will be some partnering with the county uh, on the development, uh, on servicing uh, land, uh, helping the county, but it will be certainly county driven. Um, my concern with how much West Gray gets uh, active in the redevelopment, um, long term care a number of years ago was basically downloaded from the uh, province and it was that we that the we the county has one home we've ended up with three because the county has felt that they needed to uh, get involved with that and out of that has come okay well now the province it's long-term care is a provincial mandated but now the county is in this and continuing to try and deliver it if we if we being west gray get too far involved in it it's going to be downloaded right to the lower tiers as well too and property tax i've always and will continue to preach property tax dollars are not into health care but if you let it come pretty soon you'll realize that the water not realize that the water's already boiling and you'll be too far into it. And I believe that it should stay uh, more at the province and definitely at the county level and not uh, be a lower tier. We'll be there to help out um, resource and, and service this uh, exp uh, delivery of that service by the county. But uh, I would caution West Gray Council to uh, be cautious on getting heavily involved in uh, taking the responsibility on because there may be some county councillors that would absolutely love to uh, put that forward as a, as a lower tier responsibility. Doug? But if the, um, I think it's just important that we have input and what's the, the best location for this building within our municipality. Like, I mean, uh, that's, that just makes common sense that, you know, that we should have at least input. I'm not saying we're going to take on the lead role or anything like that. I'm just saying, yep. I'm hoping that they would come to us and say, well, what do you think? You know, we can, we can be there for that? advice. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Carol? Well, I just want to say when we built Rockwood, the town of Durham worked with the county, but only in respect to the, the services, you know, on mm -hmm. the sidewalks and that kind of thing. And, and, you know, liaised with our fire department in terms of how high the building and, and the fire. That, but other than that, the town was not involved. Okay. For the chair. <laughs> and the chair was there as her county responsibility. That's right. <laughs> okay. Anything else under new business? Addendums? Notice a motion or direct motion? Um, we have two items, one uh, dealing with the uh, part that Kerry was talking about and the second one of the ad hoc committee on the CEO recruitment process. Those are the two. I need a two-thirds majority to introduce that. All of those in favor? Okay, we have the majority required. We'll send those two motions out then for uh, endorsement. There, sorry, uh, removers and seconders. Seconder. The two people down there are on the committee. They don't want to move it, so Rob. Good. Okay. So the first one is uh, one for a quotation for air conditioning for our library. 
Uh, I have a motion moved by Rob Thompson, seconded by Doug Hutchison. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of Westgate hereby approves the quotation from Sandy Hamilton Plumbing and Heating Inc. for a new air conditioning unit at the Durham Public Library branch in the amount of $20,881 plus HST. Any questions, comments? Staff. Councillor Lawrence. I have a question. Sure. Where does the money come from? Uh, in talking with Kerry, we have a, uh, a facilities um, reserve that um, has uh, looks after a lot of our uh, facility infrastructure or building infrastructure, and that's what it's uh, there for. Should that not be mentioned in the motion then, as to where the funds are coming from? I would. Uh, I would ask that uh, you know can we get that confirmation from Carrie uh, before if you can go and ask her for that for sure to be 100% but I'm pretty sure that's where she had mentioned that it was going to come from that's why Mark plays soccer uh, three days a week he can he can run back and forth between these uh, functions. An and I'm been yeah we need an intercom system between the directors. So Carrie, there was a question asked on the uh, Sandy Hamilton uh, RFP. That that funding would come from the uh, facilities reserve. Yeah, we we had budgeted ten thousand for maintenance at libraries, like we did last year. Uh, whether you want to use part of it from that or leave that for other uh, building maintenance that uh, may be occurring at any of the branches, I'm not sure if there's been anything else on the radar. This was kind of the main one, but then we also have uh, the capital facilities reserve that. Um, we figured we'd need to pull some more from as well if there wasn't other projects there. Okay, Rob? Yeah, there's just some minor, and we're not going to be doing our building inspections till September, but there has been some minor uh, items, and some have been completed, but it's a lot to do with the previous owner of the Durham branch, and uh, I think the sidewalk in Aiton, we're going to reduce that when, they, when Public Works does the sidewalks, uh, make that uh, one level instead of that step up going into the library. Brent, I've already talked to him and they were just going to cut that out and extend it down for accessibility purposes. So other than that, it's, uh, there's nothing in it to my knowledge this year. Yeah. So Councillor Lawrence uh, has put forward and I'm looking to Doug and Rob the amendment that in this motion we, that the funding comes from the capital reserve. In the maintenance there, and we're only into July. It may something may pop up, so it is capital, and it is something that will be there for years and years to come. So, Councillor Lawrence has made that that it come from the capital. Doug, Rob, you're fine with being a friendly amendment, just for clar clarification on that. I'll let you put that in there, Mark. Then, so the motion would read, and that the funding be from the capital facilities reserve. Okay. All right. Any further questions or comments on the motion? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. The second uh, notice of motion was moved by Bev Cutting, seconded by Rob Thompson. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of Westgate hereby appoints Councillors Lawrence, Hergert, and Hutchison uh, with Mayor Eccles as an uh, ex officio members to an ad hoc committee to prepare an RFP for consulting services for the search for a new CEO deputy clerk to uh, be brought back to the next council meeting uh, for consideration by council. I wish your handwriting was as good as your running uh, expertise, Mark. Slow down. <laughs> Sorry for that jab, sir. Any comments, questions on that motion? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. So 
and the process for hiring a new CEO is underway. All right. Now that that's taken that amount of time, I don't think that there's any other closed session items, Mark. So we're down to question period. At this point, we'd have uh, any questions that are anything dealing with the agenda items. Any questions from any members of of the audience? No. Any questions from member of council? No. No municipal act notices, Mark. Notice of adjournment. Uh, we're at 11.16. You have proposed 11.15 to adjourn. Sorry. Gosh. Try harder next time. <laughs> You'll try harder next time. Thank you very much. Councillor Herkut moves number 20 that we adjourn. We stand at adjournment until the next council meeting, which is scheduled for 17th. July 17th. Thank you very much. Very good. <laughs>